Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So it is time for the weekly garden tour. Every week I take you on a walk through the gardens and show you some of the things that are taking place, whether there's something new or something that we're struggling with and I just walk you through the process of what we've got going on here. If you are new to the channel here, my name is Constance and I'm a blogger, a writer, a YouTuber, a homesteader, and I and my husband are located in northern Alabama, which is gardening zone 7B. We planted roots here after 25 years of army life and living all over the place, and this is where we now call home. So grab a cup of coffee or a mug of tea and let's go for a walk through the gardens. All right, so one of the first things I have got to point out is this right here. This makes me so happy that I love sunflowers and yesterday is the first day that the sunflower was completely fully opened. Uh, the day before it was mostly opened, but yesterday was day one. And this is a lemon queen sunflower that actually came back from last year. It was a volunteer. It was growing over there in one of the other beds and I transplanted it over here along the trellis and I'm so glad that I did. One of the things I love about these Lemon Queen sunflowers, not only is their height and how, you know, magnificent they are, but they're a multi-head sunflower. So just above every single leaf growing on that stalk, there's another sunflower head. The top one's the first one, and then they all start growing. So this week, both sets of the pole beans, the purple pod and the anti half runners, have reached the top of the trellis and I've, I've kind of started winding them along the top rail. You can see where they're kind of going a little crazy here. <laughs> see that? So we had that issue last year too where they reached the top and then they just kind of turned into a jungle at the top of the trellis. I wasn't thinking. If I had remembered that, I would have um, actually elevated this trellis and made it higher. So. I'm sh I mean, I'm sure even with it elevated, it would still reach the top, but next year I'm definitely going to elevate the trellis or make it an arch, which gives it even more height and just add a couple more. Now, the tomatoes here in the no-till garden are already doing so much better than the ones did last year that were in this, in this garden. Uh, I mean, last year our raised bed tomatoes were magnificent. The ones that I planted in the no-till garden, which last year it was not no-till, but it was our first uh, year that we were establishing it, you could tell such a huge difference between the two beds. Same varieties, planted the same week. The raised beds provided countless tomatoes and we got barely a handful off of the ones that were in ground. But this year, I can tell, is already going to be way different than last year. Because we have got tomatoes all over the place, which is so exciting to see. Now you may remember I chopped down a ton of this comfrey this week to start some comfrey tea, which is a liquid fertilizer, a foliage spray, and excellent for your plants. And as you can see, you can barely even tell that I chopped it down this week. Here we have a few more tomatoes. This one is very clearly a purple Russian because it has that sort of teardrop shape um, tomatoes. My butternut squash down here is looking really well. I mean, this week it has just taken off. And uh, last week you could clearly tell the difference between all the plants. Now they're kind of blending all together and it's happened so quickly. And they're beginning to vine out. You can see right over in there. Take it off back in there. <laughs> so this is a new addition this week. I went by one of my local nurseries and I found this beautiful lilac. So this is called a syringa boomerang um, perfuming pink lilac. And let me tell you, there's only a couple of blossoms on here, as you can see, just a few flowers. 
and standing several feet away I could already smell this I mean the fragrance on this is just so strong love it lilacs are actually my favorite flower and I've always loved purple lilacs though those were my number one favorite flower ever sunflowers are, are a very close tie but I saw these pink ones and they had this such magnificent fragrance. I'm like, I've got to have them. It's not the same as purple lilac. The fragrance is different, but they still smell awesome. And so I went ahead. Now, if this thing does well, it can get five feet tall, five feet wide. And so I gave it a place here at the very end of this garden bed because I just felt like it was the perfect spot. And there wasn't really much growing down here anyways. And so I thought that's the perfect place to put that and uh, give it a home there. And I, I just noticed something else I've got to show you. Do you see that little earthworm right there going across the soil? That is miraculous, let me tell you. I'm going to show you something in a little bit that will help you understand just why it is so miraculous to see that earthworm. But coming down here to the next row, uh, you can definitely see the chamomile coming up, the radishes are getting bigger, the onions are looking good. We have the peppers that are all volunteers. Uh, I think I'm probably just going to let most of those go ahead and do their thing. If, if I see any new ones pop up, I'll go ahead and thin those out. Uh, I did go ahead and replant my roselle because I didn't have anything coming up. But I will go ahead and mulch all of this this week. And then I'll just leave some space around the line there where I put the roselle seeds. That way they have the space to come up. But I'd say all of this is ready to get mulch. Here's my... My Chinese noodle beans, uh, having a little bit of pest pressure, not awful. I mean, they're not like completely gone, but definitely having a little bit of a struggle. Um, so I'm being diligent about staying on my organic pest control routine to try and uh, to give them a good chance. Over here on this side, these are also Chinese noodle beans and several of the plants just kind of vanished when they were itty bitty seedlings. You can see there's only a few of them. That is because of those wretched slugs that we are dealing with this year. Um, so I'm going to come out here and try and fill this in and plant it again. Speaking of slugs, uh, you can see down here, this is my Lemon Queen Sunflower Patch, which is the same kind of flower that I showed you at the beginning and you can see little bitty seedlings coming up in different spots that is because i have had to reseed this several times but now that those have gotten a little bit of size to them i think we're safe <laughs> so hopefully these little ones down in here um, have a good chance and i mentioned the comfrey too earlier that is one way to use comfrey as a fertilizer the other way is to simply come in here and lay the chopped leaves down on the ground. They'll break down into the soil and all of the nutrients that are in those wonderful leaves will just go right into the soil underneath them. So that is the second way that you can use comfrey for your garden. Here's my yellow crookneck squash. I see some flower heads starting down there. So that's great. I also see squash bug eggs. You see that right there? So guess what I'll be doing today, once again. When the squash bugs show up, it becomes an everyday sort of thing. Every day you can come out here and remove every single egg from the plant. You can go through and, and pluck off every adult that you find, and the next day there's going to be more. So squash bugs are definitely a battle, but it's worth it and if you want any kind of squash especially here in northern alabama you got to do it the watermelon plants these are jubilee watermelon they're looking great so hopefully we get some watermelons out of those 
Over here, these are just a few herbs that I stuck in the ground, uh, ones that I picked up from a local nursery. That parsley is not looking good though, and the dill is kind of looking so-so along the bottom. I mean, it's got new growth and it's bushing out, but the leaves on the bottom are looking a little brown. Not sure what's going on here. Here's a new addition this week. I picked up a couple of eggplants uh, from local nursery, and <laughs> already yesterday I came out here, and right there where that hole is in that leaf, there was a Colorado potato beetle. These are some Mongolian giant sunflowers, and I still have not planted anything down there on the bottom of the trellis. I think I might come put some cucumbers in there. This is one of my oregano patches, and I'm just letting that one go to flower out here because I've got a ton of oregano and I don't really need to worry about um, pruning that to make it bush out because I've got a lot of it. <laughs> Over here in the zucchini bed, you can see I've got a jar sitting right there. And uh, I won't show you the inside of it, but it is full of dead squash bugs. Because I come out here, I find the squash bugs, I pluck them off, and I plop them in the jar. And just a tip, if you find the presence of squash bugs, and you find one, look for the other. Because they're almost always in pairs. If I find one, there's going to be another one somewhere every time but I just noticed right down in there yay! this raised bed over here again full of tomatoes we've got all sorts of them in here check that out these are the vernisage I don't know what variety it is this year I wasn't able to buy specific varieties I was only able to get a mixed um, a mixed pack of the vernisage tomato seeds so I don't know what color these are actually going to end up being last year I grew the black vernisage and they were beautiful stripy tomatoes these two plants here are dr. Weish and I've got blossoms I haven't noticed any tomatoes on these ones quite yet the peppers in this pepper bed are beginning to fill out and even my my puny little jigsaw pepper is getting some size to it so this is very encouraging and the little one down there that that froze uh, with that really late freezing temperature snap that we had it's growing so yay jigsaw peppers and right down in here that is my very first paprika pepper that's a Luschauer paprika that makes me so happy Growing and harvesting and drying and grinding my own paprika has been one of my goals So I'm I'm very very happy to see my first paprika pepper now. I've had people ask me about Growing multiple varieties of peppers in the same bed and if they cross pollinated if it if it affected them now if I was saving the seeds it would definitely be uh, an adventure because yes the peppers do cross pollinate last year in this same bed i grew several different kinds of peppers some were mild like the lipstick pepper some were hot like uh, cayenne or the chinese five color and what i noticed was in the beginning of the season and while well for most of the season the peppers seemed to be very true however i did notice that some of the milder peppers would have the slightest bit of heat to them. And I had um, jalapeno peppers growing right next to Chinese five color peppers. And late in the season, some of those jalapeno peppers would get the slightest purple tinge in the top of them and would be just a little bit hotter. So yes, there will be some cross pollination. There will be some blending like that but like I said it didn't really happen until later in the season so most of the year the peppers grew true so I had to show you all of these volunteer flowers all of these right in here this looks like a queen lime of some sort I got a yellow one over there we've got that big pink one every one of these zinnias are volunteers from last year including this sunflower <laughs> which I'm I'm just leaving them I love them 
that's a volunteer, those are volunteers. Every zinnia that is in this bed is a volunteer from last year. Right down in here, these are the anemone flowers. Look at how pretty and delicate these things are. These are my first year growing these. They are some of the bulbs that I picked up at that German grocery store in North Carolina. And uh, they're lovely. The guara is covered in lovely pink blossoms. The Shasta daisies are going at it. The stone crop down here has started opening. You can see that there. And I'm, ex and I'm so excited about that little baby one right there. That makes me happy. Well, hello there. Here's another grouping of peppers down in the no-till bed. These pepper plants, they're not doing as well as the ones in the in-ground bed, but they're doing significantly better than the ones that I tried to grow in this bed last year. It's like a night and day comparison. And then right down there in that row, I have more zinnias. Uh, these are the cut and come again zinnias. There's just a handful of them right there. I planted these before I realized just how many zinnias <laughs> I would have coming back as volunteers. Grab my coffee. Please don't be a bug in there. Ah, good. Look who I just spotted. The neighbor duck. I haven't seen him in months. Well, hello there. How you doing? <laughs> Uh-oh. Duck just saw him. Run, neighbor duck, run! <laughs> Ducks are extremely territorial. Just like a rooster. Okay, so you remember how I mentioned the earthworm over there and how it was practically miraculous to see that wonderful earthworm climbing across the soil out there in the garden? That is because when we bought our property, the soil was utterly lifeless. This is old crop, uh, cropland, farmland, and there was nothing, nothing in this soil. Yesterday, I was out here digging, and all of this is exactly what our garden used to be. And you see it's this orange clay soil. There were no worms, there was not even grubs. I couldn't find anything in this soil. And that is what our garden used to be. So that is why seeing those peppers and those tomatoes in the in-ground no-till garden doing so much better than last year is so encouraging because it's going to take time, it's going to be a process, but year by year, every year that soil in the in-ground garden is getting better and better so depending upon where you live i mean unless you live up like in the midwest where you've got that beautiful nutritious soil that you can just till and grow everything in you are not going to have an instant garden it's going to take time it's when you see someone with a big beautiful amazing garden just know it's taken years to get it that way not only by growing the soil but growing your knowledge and your experience and learning how to do it and every year there's going to be something that doesn't do well every year and there's going to be something you struggle with so don't don't ever feel discouraged if you get started gardening and your first year two years even three years you don't have an amazing garden it's going to take time everything about gardening is a process All right, so now we're in the raised bed garden that is in front of the house and it's starting to get really bright. That lovely cloud cover that I had has kind of burned off. Um, so hopefully you can see everything all right. Now this week I did a video all about comfrey 
And I know it looks like these comfrey plants are completely dead, but that root system down in there is still completely viable. So there will be brand new comfrey that will come up out of the ground from what I planted, even if the top piece of it dies off. My t potato tubs over here, uh, don't think they're gonna make it. I had heard that it was too late in the year to be planting potatoes here in Northern Alabama, and I think that was accurate information. My dahlia has opened up, beautiful. That nasturtium down there is looking really good. No flowers yet, but that is the Alaska red nasturtium. I loved the variegated leaves that were on there. My cucumbers down there look like they are doing great. This was like my second or third planting, uh, battling slugs, but we've got true leaves, we've got some size, and I'm excited. These on this side are the national cucumbers, and over in this bed, these are uh, Ashley cucumbers. And so there's a few of those coming up. That right there should be some um, milkweed butterfly flower that I planted. Same as right here. Um, nothing's really coming up over there. I, I'm kind of, I've given up on my, uh, my poppy seeds. So I went ahead and I planted some Aunt Molly's ground cherries and they tend to take a long time to germinate, so I don't plan on seeing anything there for a while. Although, that right there might be one. They have these sort of wrinkly little leaves. You are not. And these beds over here are doing great. My Joseph's Coat Roses are just, they blow me away. So you can see this one here that has is just beginning to open. Now, just as it opens, it'll have yellow and it'll have some orange in there. And then it'll gradually become more of this, hopefully the color shows up. And then it'll gradually become this, this coral kind of color. And then eventually the petals will turn white and pink just before they fall off. So I am loving this. My Mongolian giant sunflowers are doing really good. I did have to tie them up uh, this week because we were supposed to be getting some storms. We never really got much of anything. Um, but I reinforced them just to keep them from getting broken. Although I did forget to do this one, I noticed. Now I had two down here. Uh, two Mongolian giant sunflowers. But I came out here the other morning and one of them it was as big as the other one was completely snapped off and there was like this big pile of of i don't know where the soil was disturbed it looked like it looked like something hit the garden bed and i'm wondering because there is a fake chicken right there in that bed i'm wondering if an owl thought there was something in there and went to hit it hit the soil busted the sunflower and realized that wasn't a real bird. <laughs> I don't know. That's just my best guess, but I don't know how else that could have happened. Hello there, lightning bug. I have been loving coming out here in the evenings and just watching all of the tree line just lighting up like a fireworks show. Hundreds, hundreds of lightning bugs everywhere. So again, these are the tie-dye, Berkeley pink tie-dye tomatoes, and there's a bunch of them in here. Something that I did notice is that I definitely missed some of the fused blossoms because I have got some funky looking tomatoes uh, here and there growing on these plants.
down here in this spot I had planted some straw flower seeds and I hadn't seen anything coming up so I went ahead and I stuck some pineapple sage in here I love 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 pineapple sage and I saw um, a couple starts at the farmers co-op this week and so I grabbed those right down in here below this blue Monday sage you can see those little seedlings right there that is caraway my first time growing that these cosmos are getting nice and bushy no flower heads yet but I don't think it'll be too oh nope I take that back I see a bud right there cool this is another new addition this week that I was super excited to find I mentioned this in another video it's this variegated sage it's it's a tricolor you got the pink and purple in the middle and then the green and white leaves I was so excited to find those I got two of them <laughs> and then over here my newest raised bed my five minute raised bed so most of these are doing really well I do need to come out here and give them some plant food I like to fertilize every few weeks with some organic fertilizer and I did the in-ground garden yesterday morning but I haven't done anything out here yet so I will be doing this in the next couple of days and then I also need to come out and mulch um, this bed since all of these plants are good and established uh, it's time to mulch this up to help keep some of the moisture in the soil because it is getting very very hot here now so then remember what I said uh, just a minute ago about the comfrey plant how uh, even if the top of the plant dies off, as long as that root system is taken care of, you know, as long as it's watered and all of that, you will have new growth that will come from that. And, and not, not to, um, don't be discouraged, don't give up on it, because that root system is usually still alive. Uh, case in point is some more comfrey that I planted right here around this pear tree this week uh, when I did that video about propagating comfrey. You'll see here that this plant died off, that one died off, and so did the other one, but look right there, that is a brand new leaf. So even though the top of it dies off, leave that root system in place, continue to take care of it just as though you planted some seeds, because there's still life in there. All right, so that is it for this week's garden tour. Uh, thanks for coming along and walking through the gardens with me. Uh, if you are new here, I do a garden tour every single week. It goes live on the channel on Mondays. Once a month, that tour is part of a collaboration with the Homesteaders of America. And on that particular Monday, the videos go up early in the morning. But all the rest of the time, my videos go live at noon central and I do at least three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. You can also sign up for my free weekly newsletter that is linked down below this video and that will keep you up to date on everything taking place on Cosmopolitan Cornbread, the YouTube channel, as well as CosmopolitanCornbread.com, my website, where you can find hundreds of recipes and homesteading related articles. So thanks for hanging out with me again this morning. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to you all next time.